What's happening, Hoodlum Gang? Welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Hoodie from the Hood, aka your friend from that big old win, and I'm back at y'all with another video. If you happen to be new to the channel and you want to become a member of the Hoodlum Gang, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave me a comment, hit that notification bell, share the video, tell a friend to tell a friend, and go on over to IG and follow me at Hoodie from the Hood. Now look, uh few things I want to touch on real fast um a couple days ago I was up in Oceanside um with Big Mike Oside hit ups uh he called me told me that he was doing a good thing for the community up there and um wanted me to come up there and you know check it out so uh that's what I did ran into Bishop Snow shout out Bishop Snow um basically what they're doing is making uh balderrama park in east oceanside in the pasole town uh neighborhood they're making that park the north county version of uh chicano park you know what i mean with all the murals and stuff so that's what they was up there doing um i believe they had some outside painters that was trying to come in and you know they stepped up and was like nah they not from this community and um they got people from the community to do murals that has to do with their culture. You know what I mean? So that was a beautiful thing. They put their foot down. Um, we all know gentrification is hidden everywhere. So that was their way of keeping a piece of the community uh, to themselves. Like I said, not just with the murals, but with actual people from their community doing the paintings. You know what I mean? So salute to them for that. Um, also, the other day, shout out to Rockstar. I, I, I was on Rockstar's live on uh, Instagram. Shout out to Bosco. Bosco came in there. China Mac came in there for a second. Uh, man, uh, <laughs> Loose Cannon ended up coming in there, man. Him and Bosco had me dying, man. If y'all seen that, y'all was probably wondering, like, how Hoodie Hood get here? Man, I was on there with Rockstar, then other people started coming in, and then, you know, it just, it just went left. That was comedy, though. But um, this video, this video, you see the title, um, Keefe D, his bail was denied. Uh, if you don't know who Keefe D is, he was allegedly um, involved in the unalive in the Tupac back in 96. This is stuff that he's going on to say in, in various interviews that he was there along with three other people. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he was recently indicted for it last year and uh for some reason well i know the reason uh y'all boy whack 100 wanted to bail him out now i guess you know uh they had called him to um testify he did it over zoom and uh it didn't go too well for whack or keefe d you know what i'm saying because his bail was denied the reason why his bail was denied is because Whack 100 is a chatty patty. We all know this. Um, he talked too much. And it backfired on Keefe D and him. Now, you may ask yourself... See, I don't think this is personal. A lot of people was thinking he already said what he said about Tupac back in the day. Now he getting into it with Suge Knight. And I don't, it could have been a little bit of both. But I think it was just more so he saw an opportunity to uh, make a few dollars off of Keefe D and his story. Um, it's not looking good for Keefe D So he probably, you know, along with his health problems um, So he probably like, man, let me get this story out there And capitalize off of it The problem is uh, When when you out on that type of case If you out on bail Or even in there You're not supposed to be talking about that type of stuff And you definitely ain't supposed to be trying to um gain revenue from it i believe it's illegal um because I, I was watching uh uh, uh alex alonzo munchie being and spider loke and they was talking about it and uh you can't do that now had whack just got him out and then did it and then after whatever happened then he put it out that would be one thing but the fact that he was on vlad in clubhouse talking about getting him out of jail so they can make all these moves just came back to bite him in his ass and like i said he a chatty patty he can't stop talking so 
the DA is like, you, you, you said you want to get him out so he could do these interviews. You got the interviews lined up and this and that and this, this documentary or whatever is going to be. You already got this lined up for him. So needless to say, they saw that it was a money move on Wax's behalf and you can't do that. So they denied the man's bail. Um, but you got to know with Wack, man, I don't think Wack has done anything genuine for anybody out of in, in his life, homie. If he do something for you, it come with a heavy price tag and you're basically selling your soul to the devil. So that backfired. You know what I mean? Um, you can't you can't do that. I mean, that, that'll be equivalent to saying, yeah, we're going to get the homie out. He in there for getting cracking on some niggas. We're going to get the homie out so he could slide again. Like, you can't get somebody, you can't bail somebody out for a crime so they could commit a, another crime. Because like I said, I'm under the impression that uh, that's illegal. That's, or at least that's how it sound like what Alex Alonzo was saying. Like, you can't do that. You know what I mean? But what what's up with Wack and his 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 love for associating with rats? He, he did it with 6 9 um, like Spider Loke said, he says Stutterbox told on him, but he maintained a relationship with him for years after that. Uh, Keefy D, Munchie B had pointed out that Keefy D and Alex Alonzo pointed out Keefy D when he first told the story, the driver was still alive, so you can't say all of them was dead. And even still, that's a slippery slope. It depends on who you ask. They're gonna be like, that's telling, don't matter if they was dead or not, or they not telling. But if you told that story and one of them people that was in the car was still alive, that's for sure snitching. Then they said he wore wire on the dude from New York who supposedly was supposed to wire the, uh, the money that Diddy had to him. And old boy kept the money and ran off with it. And he wore a wire trying to get him to confess to it. So he's definitely a rat. I don't understand how this dude keep on associating with rats and then call himself the exposers. You exposing yourself. But the dumb niggas going to keep on ignoring all of that, homie. Um, also, whack, his whole angle was what we say on Vlad or No Jumper. Verbatim, this is what he said. We go over it before, so we know what to talk about. He says some of it, we exaggerate. Some of it is completely made up. So when you see this nigga on that platform, you have to ask yourself how much it is is true. How much of it is a lie? How much of it is just for entertainment? Brick Baby has alluded to this multiple times. When he got into it with, I believe, uh, DW and P Nice, he asked, was we running a play? Also, on that recorded phone call with Loose Cannon, I believe he was saying, uh, 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 like basically I'm a full-time YouTuber at this point. It's I'm an entertainer. So y'all keep on watching this show and y'all keep watching these dudes and it's all scripted. Is this why we say it's Jerry Springer? They get up there and they do stuff and they run with whatever narrative is the most popular. You know what I mean? I just seen, uh, Wax speaking on Boosie getting his federal case dropped. And he still threw the homie KP under the bus, even though KP then came on my channel with his paperwork. This is why certain niggas that's from San Diego or claim San Diego that's on no jumper should have had the homie come up there on a bigger platform to do that. I, shit. I'm at, what? I'm almost at 25,000. I think I had like 20 or 21 at the time. So a lot of people didn't see that segment where he came with his paperwork and broke down everything. But see, Wack knows about that. Wack saw that. And he gonna keep the false narrative going. But in his defense, I will say this. Um, as much as I listen to Boosie, as much as I think he's a, 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 a character um, that's needed on the internet, I personally have never... <laughs> seen the feds just drop a case out of nowhere like that. I'm just going to keep it all the way 100, no favoritism, no biasness. I've never seen that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I've never seen them just drop a case like that out of nowhere. So, yeah. He might have had a little point right there, but like I said, all this other shit, come on, homie. It's, 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 it's made up. It's scripted. But y'all y'all be tuning into that and y'all be believing these dudes. But that's my video for today. Did y'all see that? What y'all think about 
Keefe D. Bell's getting denied and what y'all think about it being WAC 100's fault that the bell got denied. Stop talking, nigga. Hoodie from the hood, your friend from that big O N. Till next time, I'm out.